Back at it again, baby, and we got another one with Larry Elder and Dave Rubin. We checked out a, a shorter clip of this before, but now we have the full thing. Let's dive in. Uh, I want to get this right, so I want to look at my notes for this. According to this, uh, you are black. Is that, <laughs> is that correct? That I'm is looking, correct. That is correct. Okay. Not, not African American. That's not a term I like. You, well, how come you don't like the term African? Ridiculous. I was born and raised in, in America. I've never been to Africa. Uh, how, why am I an African American? Most of my people have been here longer than most of other, other, the other people in this room. Uh, yet most people don't have a hyphen. Uh, you know, I, I'm an Italian American, Greek American, Rom, uh, Romanian American. It's an absurd term. It's a term that Jesse Jackson almost single handedly cram, crammed down the throat of our media and after Jackson began to talk about why uh, blacks should uh, have some connection to Africa all of a sudden New York Times LA Times all of the media began using that expression it's ridiculous yeah, yeah. I mean I personally don't use the term hold on wait is is that what I came from Jesse Jackson saying that I didn't know that interesting Times all of the media began using that expression. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I personally don't use the term African American that much because one time I had a guest on the show and I referred to her as African American. She said, "Well, I'm actually Jamaican." <laughs> so you know what I mean. So I guess that Oops. that goes to your point. And, so, and, I, and I remember reading one time, Dave, somebody uh, uh, was given a description of some suspect uh, who had uh, done some crime, was running away, uh, and uh, he was described as an African American. How do you know where he was from? Could have right. been from Africa. Could have been from Jamaica. Could have been from Canada. So what, what, do you make, what, what do you make of that when someone like, because I know you really rail against Jesse Jackson and, and these guys on the left that use, and I want to talk a lot about identity politics. Okay. So the guys that use these phrases, what, what are they going for there? Well, what, they're, what is they're, the goal? There? The, the, the goal is to r r tell black people that we're victims, that uh, discrimination and racism remain major problems in America when in fact they don't. Uh, and uh, they want black people to vote for the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party gets 95% uh, of the black vote, uh, and the reason they get it is because blacks are convinced that the number one issue facing the country right now is social justice, racist white cops, uh, discrimination, systemic uh, racism, microaggression, whatever new word they come up with, and it's a bunch of nonsense. The number one problem domestically facing this country is a breakdown of the family. And uh, President Obama said it. I didn't. Uh, a, a, a black kid, or a kid, not just a black kid, a kid raised without a dad, is five times more likely to be poor and commit crime times, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. So you're far more likely to end up in jail without having a dad than you are because of a white racist cop. Right. So, mm. but you wouldn't not acknowledge that there are some systemic issues. Give, give me an example. G tell me what you think the most systemic racist issue is. What is it? Well, I would say that because black people in most cases, in many cases, were descendants of slaves, that racism as a as an institution, that it just, a certain amount of it just exists. I, 2015? It, that give, give me the most blatant racist example you can come up with right now. Um, I think you could probably find evidence that, in general, cops are, that, that cops are more willing to shoot if the uh, perpetrator is black what's your data than for, white. What's your basis for saying that? Last year... The well, look, I know a lot of people would say, look what's going on in Chicago. I, I, I know what they would say. Yeah. I'm talking about what the facts are. 965 people were shot by cops last, uh, last year and killed. 4% of them were white cops shooting unarmed blacks. In, in Chicago in 2011, 21 people were shot and killed by cops. Uh, in 2015... There when the facts start coming out... <laughs> Man, and I think this is the part of the interview that uh, we had checked out before, but yeah, it, it's crazy to hear some of these statistics. There were seven. Uh, in Chicago, which is a third black, a third white, and a third Hispanic, 70% of the homicides are black on black. Uh, about 40 per month, almost 500 uh, in the year per year, last year in Chicago, and 75% of them are unsolved. Where is the Black Lives Matter on that? The idea that a racist white cop uh, and shooting unarmed black people is a peril to black people is BS. It's yeah. complete and total BS. And, and the reason for these so-called activists saying this is the assumption that racism remains a major problem in America. The media, CNN, especially MSNBC, runs down whenever a black cop shoots somebody, uh, and, and, and it's a, some, some march on Washington. It's ridiculous. Uh, black people, half the homicides in this country are committed by and against black people. Last year, there were 14,000 homicides, I'm not talking about suicides, I'm talking about homicides. Mm -hmm. Um, half of them were black, 96% of them black on black of that 7,000. Where's the Black, black Lives Matter people on that? So that, there's where you would say that this is purely because of social justice. This Pure, is purely, purely because, because of, they want ultimately for people to be angry enough to just keep voting 
Democrats. That's right. right. And, that and where's, where's the evidence of a lack of social mm. justice? When a black uh, suspect is killed by, by a cop, believe me, the media's on it, people are watching it, uh, and, uh, and justice will, will, for the most part, occur. In Baltimore, where Freddie Gray was killed, uh, Freddie Gray died in a van, I shouldn't say was killed, died in a van. Yeah. You have a city that's 45% uh, black, uh, city council is 100% Democrat, the majority of city council is black, the top cop at the time was, was black, the number two cop was black, the majority of the command staff is black, the, the mayor is black, uh, the AG is black, uh, oh. and yet here we are talking about racism. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Yeah. It's absurd. So it's funny, I find myself caught in between this a little bit as a liberal where I want to always try to defend the other. So in this case, the other being black people, I, I'm always sympathetic to that. And that, uh, yeah, yeah, at the same <laughs> time, I hear you laying out a pretty solid. Well, the, the, pro the problem is we don't need saving. Like, I, I, I don't understand why some people look at black folks as if like we are helpless little babies and we need to be held like I'm holding my daughter now and spoon fed. That's almost more our word than anything else. And I've spoken about this before. The fact that you think that I am incapable of figuring out life on my own tells me that you think that I'm stupid simply because of the color of my skin. And I, I, that's just wild to me. Oh, I, these are just the facts. I'll tell you something else too. There was just a study, um, uh, University of Washington, uh, and it turns out cops were more reluctant, more hesitant to pull the trigger against a black, black suspect than a white suspect. Uh, probably because of the fear of being accused of racially profiling and the fear that the civil rights establishment was going to come down on him. So if anything, uh, whites are more likely to be shot by a cop under, under certain circumstances than a, than, a, uh, than a black person. And in the last 30 or 40 years, the number of percentage of suspects killed by cops who are black has declined 75 percent. However, the percentage of whites killed by cops has flatlined. Yeah. And so if anything, people are more concerned about shooting black people for fear that they're going to be called racist. And almost all, every one of these incidents, whether it's Eric Gardner in, in New York who died because he was selling Lucy's and re resisted arrest, whether it's Tamir Rice in Cleveland who was twirling around the gun, whether it's Michael Brown in Ferguson uh, who had just uh, committed a ar strong arm robbery, almost every one of these incidents involves somebody resisting arrest. Why don't you just do what the police tell you? My dad said, when I get pulled over, have my hand at 10 o'clock, have my hand at 2 o'clock, say yes, sir, say no, sir, make sure my paperwork is in, in order, and if I feel the cop is uh, mistreating me, get a badge number and deal with it later on. If Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and Obama and the whole... I don't understand why people would even fight with a cop. Like, it has nothing to do with race. I mean, it could be a white person, black person, blue person, you know, don't matter. Mexican, Latino, Asian, whatever. You know that that cop has a lethal weapon on them, a deadly weapon. They are trained to you and they are trained to use it. So why would you fight? Would you fight a would you fight a random guy on the street that you knew had a piece of that you that you knew had a piece of steel on the side of their hip? I got to be careful with my words. You know the same thing that a cop has? Would you fight him still? You probably wouldn't. So why would you fight a cop? Like it's just like I, you know, so I I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just like too simplistic in my thinking, but y'all let me know how you feel it in the comment section. Group of them told black people to do that. We'd have a lot fewer of these things uh, to deal with in the first place. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm hearing a lot of what you're saying here. So as a black conservative then, who now you've, you've laid out your case there. But you haven't laid out well, yours. I, so, asked, I asked you to name the most important uh, okay. example of racism, and you gave white cops going after black people. And I, and I told you, gave you the facts for that, so that's nonsense. So what, you must have something else. What else is it? If you think racism well, remains a problem in America, give it to well, me. Well, I think it remains a problem. Give it to it's me. Not, it's give it not, to me. It may not be systemic in that we have, it's not like you're not being hired because you're black. There's no systemic reason, you know, legal reason that that exists, that kind of thing. But I think that racism as a general... Uh, I need some. Theory I need exists. some. I need some specifics. You gave me the white <laughs> cop thing. What else? Give me another example. What do you think is a problem? I love that he's not letting them off the hook. Like he 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 wants them to realize that your thinking is a bit flawed here. Like I I understand that it's coming from a nice place, or you feel it's coming from a you know a nice place, but your your thinking is <laughs> off. Oh, you okay? And I want you to realize it is kind of what Larry Elder is doing here. Well, well, 
as a black conservative, tell me how do no, no, you, you how do you, you get people to you're, come around? You're, you're the one who yeah. made the assertion that you yeah. think racism remains a major problem in America. I asked you to give me an example. You gave me white cops going after blacks. I, as, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't hold it up very well. What's the other argument you have? What, what, what's the other thing? Well, I don't know that it's systemic in that in the sort of macro sense. I'm not, I'm not mad. I, yeah, I, no, I, no, no. I just want to know what, what it is you're, you're talking no, about. No, no, so I, can, that, that's we, we exactly what that's. Yeah. Well, believe me, that's 100 percent what I wanted to have you. Blacks here. are not getting into school. BS. We have a race. We have affirmative action. So a black person with a with an SAT and a GPA uh, of of X will will get into a school faster and easier than a white person with an SAT uh, or a GPA of X. And if going to going to school is a route to the middle class, you can make an argument that blacks have an easier route to, middle, to the middle class. If you're Ooh. talking about uh, black, uh, b about poverty, um, the poorer you are, the more accessible loans and grants are for you. Uh, the, 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 the problem, the, the biggest burden that black people have, in my opinion, again, mm -hmm. is the percentage of blacks, 75% of them, that are raised without fathers. Uh, and that has every other social negative consequence connected to it. Crime, uh, not being uh, able to compete economically in the country, being more likely to be arrested, that's the number one problem facing the black community. And when I hear people tell me about systemic racism or unconscious racism, I always say, give me an example, and almost nobody can do it. So, so the families stuff so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll follow your logic there mm -hmm. on the family stuff what what can actually be done about that and i think it's important that we always call people out when um the bs is there give me an example give me some facts some statistics to prove your claim because i feel like a lot of people have gotten away with just saying stuff for far too long without actually proving it you know it sounds good it fires people up but Give me, give me some statistics. Give me something that that is an actual fact, not just an opinion, that backs up what it is that you're saying. I love it. Then I mean, what because that's reverse, a, that's a big re reverse the welfare state. Uh, in um, 1890, 1900, you look at census reports. A black kid, believe it or not, was slightly more likely to be born to a nuclear intact family than a white kid. Even during slavery. Uh, a black kid was more likely to be born under a roof with his biological mother and biological father than today. What's happened is we launched this so-called war on poverty in the 60s, where literally Lyndon Johnson sent people walk, knocking on doors. I, I, I lived in the 60s, and people knocked on doors, apprising women of their availability to welfare, provided there was no man in the house. Uh, and we went from 25% of blacks being born outside of wedlock in 65 to 75% right now. And you look at how much money that we spent on welfare, uh, and the lines are parallel. It was a neutron bomb dropped on this country, not just on the black community, but on people in general. Uh, at one time, only about 5% of whites were born out. That's very, very interesting. And recently, through watching these videos, I've learned the negative effects of um, the whole system. And, you know, it's interesting because... I've never really thought of it that way, but now that it's been presented in a different way and some some of the statistics have been presented, I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. You know what? Actually, they're right. And it, it, it's 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 crazy how for basically, you know, all of your life, you've thought a certain way, you, you, you thought something was actually good, and then you get smacked in the face and you realize, hold on, wait, it's actually the total opposite. It's crazy outside of wedlock. Now 25% of whites are born outside of wedlock. I was in college in 1970, and there was a report called the Moynihan Report, uh, The Negro Family, A Case for National Action. It's written by a liberal, by a man who became uh, a Democratic senator for the, from, from New York. And at the time, 25% of black kids were born outside of wedlock. He said, my God, this number is, is horrific. If we don't do something about it, it could get even higher. Well, fast forward, 25% of white kids are now born outside of wedlock. It is the number one problem in this country. And what we've done, in my opinion, is we've economically incentivized women to marry the government. And we've allowed men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And now we have this. So do you and think, the left has done this. Right. Okay. So do you think then that as a, as a black conservative, mm -hmm. that the biggest issue is it's impossible to have this conversation, right? Right. Like the stuff we're talking about right now is rarely really discussed well, in the media. You know, people, you've written some books about it and mm -hmm. it's, people talk about it every now and again, but we, and that is why we need to bring debates back to the center stage, because this topic would most definitely come up if we had debates, you know, on television like we have sports. The topic would come up 
the truth would come out, the facts. We gotta get debates back on TV, we have to. Rarely have this discussion because, and this is where I will agree with you, that the left has made language such a problem and everyone's so trigger warned in safe space that we're afraid that if you have this conversation that somehow I'm gonna come off racist. No, you know, or... I, I, that's not why we, well, we don't have the conversation. We don't have the conversation because the left would then have to look in the mirror and go, Jesus H. Christ, look, <laughs> look at what I've done. And they don't wanna do this. I've had a radio show for almost 25 years. I've invited Jesse Jackson on 50 times, 60 times. I've invited Al Sharpen on that, that number. Uh, Maxine Water, another loudmouth black woman around here who's running around talking about racism. She won't come on my show either. They don't want to deal with these issues. Why? Let's have a conversation. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me how I'm wrong. Give me your data. Give me your facts. Tell me what you got. Yeah. And I could quote the, the Brookings Institution, which is a liberal think tank. I feel the same way. If I'm wrong about something, let me know. Give me some facts, some statistics, and you know I, I, I'll definitely change my mind. I'm not like stuck on any one mindset or anything. Y'all know, I've said that time and time again. I go where the facts go. It's that simple. And the Heritage Foundation, which is a conservative think tank, and they'll both tell you that there, there's a relationship between crime and bad schools uh, and going to prison and not having a dad. So this is not just a liberal kind of thing or a conservative kind of thing. It's a real world kind of thing, and they don't want to have that conversation. I've never heard a reporter ask Obama about the connection between the rise of the, of the single parent household uh, and the rise of, of, of welfare spending. I've never heard anybody ask him that question. Not one time. Yeah. And so as far as I'm concerned, there's this, 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 this um, desire not to have this conversation for fear that it then will cause you to rethink your assumptions. A psychologist would call that cognitive dissonance, the, the, this, this anxiety that you feel when you have had your assumptions challenged and you don't want to do it. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. So how mm. then would someone like you mm. or someone that believes in what the things that you're talking about, how do you wrestle away a little bit of the narrative from the Black Lives Matter folks? Because obviously you, I tell, I tell you, the truth. you care about the same thing. Of course right? I do. I, I tell the truth. I talk about uh, the number one cause of preventable death for young white men uh, is car accidents. The number one cause of preventable death for young black men is homicide committed by other young black men. I tell the truth. I give the facts. Uh, and the facts are racist. Yeah. So, <laughs> the facts are racist. The right, facts are right. racist. The truth hurts. It is what it is. Right, right, right. Hashtag facts are racist. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm friends with uh, another black conservative, David Webb. You probably mm -hmm. know him on, know on Sirius XM, and he's a Fox News contributor. Mm -hmm. And I had been doing a, a progressive show a while back, and I was on with someone, and they didn't know him personally, nor knew that I was friends with him. Right. And they kept saying he's the token black guy yeah. on Fox. Right. Now, I'm sure you get plenty oh, of this kind of thing. Oh, my goodness. Token, bootlicker, Uncle Tom, um, Sambo, Sambo Tom. Coconut, as in brown on the outside, white on the inside. On. Wait. Now, I'm sure you get plenty oh, of this kind of thing. Oh, my goodness. Token, bootlicker, Uncle Tom, um, Sambo. Sam Sambo? What is, who is that? Sambo Tom, coconut, as in brown on the outside, white on the inside, uh, Oreo. Sam <laughs> I've never heard anybody call somebody a coconut. Brown on the outside, white on the inside. Wow. That's a first, coconut. I've heard the Uncle Tom and the bootleg, some of these other things, but coconut? It's actually kind of clever, if I'm going to be honest. I mean, it's stupid, but it's actually kind of clever. Brown on the outside, white on the inside. Huh. <laughs> coconut. Sambo Tom, <laughs> coconut as in brown on the outside, white on the inside. Uh, Oreo, same concept. Uh, mm. The Antichrist, Man, you gotta because, hold this. This because is... they've got to malign somebody like me. I am a bigger threat to their whole ideology than almost anybody else. A black guy who does not believe that he's a victim, a black guy who believes in hard work and personal responsibility, mm. a black guy who doesn't believe in handouts, a black guy who doesn't believe in the welfare state, a black guy who doesn't believe in affirmative action. I am the antithesis of everything they stand for, and therefore I can't just be dealt with uh, with facts and, and rebutted with facts. I've got to be maligned. I've got to be uh, cast away. I've got to be treated as as if I'm Darth Vader. That's what the left does. So that's interesting. And again, I, this is where I've, I've really struggled with my guys on the left, because in a way that is actually showing. It's racist. Race. Of course it is. That's it's bigotry. Act, right. Because that's I, I, I don't have the same right to have an opinion as somebody else. I've never heard Rush Limbaugh be called anti-white because he uh, criticizes Hillary uh, and the left. But I criticize black left people and I'm, and I'm, I'm anti-black. It's bigotry. It's racism. Mm -hmm. Calling somebody an Uncle Tom is as offensive as calling somebody uh, an N-word lover. Yeah. So when it comes to, to the black community 
and politics. Mm -hmm. So I, I got you on, on a bunch of, bunch of this stuff. The black community in a lot of ways isn't for some of the things that the Democratic Party is for, right? Because the black community, a lot of times, and it has a lot to do with the church, is, right. is more socially conservative. The only right? thing that, that connects black people to the Democratic Party, in my opinion, is this notion of social justice and this notion that racism remains a major problem in America. Look down the list of, of things that, that black people oh. like and, and support. <clears throat> Blacks are more pro-life than whites are. Blacks were more anti-gay marriage. Uh, than, than whites were. That's one of the reasons this proposition passed here in California is because of the way blacks and browns voted. Again, I didn't vote that way, but it's the way a lot of blacks and browns did. Um, uh, blacks want to be wealthy. One of the reasons Donald Trump is getting about 25% of blacks, which is five times, by the way, the, the percentage that Mitt Romney got, is because uh, of Donald Trump's swagger and his, um, <laughs> and his uh, uh, being proud that he's made money. Uh, and so, uh, and, and in the inner city... Wait, that... Before his presidency, you could even listen to, and it's interesting, you can listen to some rap songs where even rappers are referencing Trump. Just go back and listen to some rap songs. You'll hear Trump, Trump, Trump. I'm the black Donald Trump, you know, kind of situation. So, yeah, speaking facts. Being proud that he's made money. Uh, and so, uh, and, and in the inner city... Wait, that's a really fascinating little piece right there. Because one, I never, yeah. one more quick one. This is yeah. really important. Um, the Democratic Party is completely beholden to the teachers' union and vice versa. Uh, the union is adamantly opposed to vouchers, where the money follows the kid rather than the other way around. Inner city black women uh, and fathers in inner city, black, uh, brown women and brown fathers want vouchers. They realize the schools suck. I went to Crenshaw High School in South Central. Crenshaw. Right now, 3%, that's not a typo, 3% of kids can do math at grade level. I'm going to send my kid to that school because I don't have enough money to send my kid to a better... 3%? Why are you even sending kids to school at that point? It's a, it's a waste of time. It is a total waste of of time i need to look into some of the, some of the uh statistics on that because if that is that is true that is bogus that it is just being allowed to you know just go on the way that it is three percent can read at grade level why are you even sending your kids to school why do we even have school at this point let them stay home send them out to work somewhere you know because apparently they ain't doing nothing in school that is craziness Kids can do math at grade level. I'm going to send my kid to that school because I don't have enough money to send my kid to a better school. It's 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 an assault. Uh, there's a program called the DC Hope Scholarship Program, where every year uh, parents who subscribe to the to the, the program and, and it's four times as many people want to get in as there are seats will give uh, kids about ten to twelve thousand dollars to go to a, a non uh, DC government school. Um, and every two years when it's over, Obama and the Democrats kind of try to shut it down. And the reason they don't is a bunch of black parents go to the s uh, streets, have a press conference, start crying and say, oh, my kid's doing better. I can't think of anything more damaging to a kid's future is to send him to a school where it's a crip school, where the kids are, are, are not learning, where a lot of them are not learning because they don't care, and where the whole level is now dumbed down to... Uh, cater to the lowest common denominator in a class. And as a result, you have kids that have uh, uh, poorer SAT scores than the other ones. You're stifling potential. When you dumb the curriculum down, the, the, the guys and gals who had the ability to overachieve, I mean, they're not even being pushed in any type of way. Now, I'm not saying that you should just um, overload kids that can't handle it, but they should be filtered out into other uh classroom somehow some kind of way and i'm not saying that they they are they don't have the ability to learn but just at the moment the way that it's being taught at the speed that it's being taught they can't keep up which is that's fine um and yeah kids can be cruel so if they see other kids in a different classroom then maybe you know and and, and maybe it needs to be done covertly so that students don't actually know that they are in a certain level classroom or something i don't know you guys can let me know how you feel in the comment section class and as a result you have kids that have uh, uh poorer sat scores than they otherwise would if they had a chance to go somewhere else that challenged them um and so inner city parents want vouchers young black people when they're told about the benefits of privatizing social security uh want to do it because 65 years old blacks die sooner than whites do and when you die 
all your contribution to Social Security go poof, as opposed to being able to, to will it to your child. When blacks are taught about this, young blacks want the opportunity to put their money into a, an account that they can control, so when they get 65 years old, they have real money. So privatizing Social Security, vouchers, uh, abortion, uh, same-sex marriage, all of these issues, blacks are really not in lockstep with the Democratic Party. But the Democratic Party has successfully uh, convinced blacks that racism, uh, this white cop, this is widespread, uh, the man's out to get you, and vote for us, and we'll deal with it. So how much of this is a messaging problem? If I grant you all of that, right, how much of this is just a messaging problem by the Republicans? Because it seems to me, and I've said this several times, that someone like Tim Scott, who is a black Republican senator right. from the South, right. he should be a hero, not only of the black community, but he should really be a hero of the left, right? Because this is a successful black He should be man. an American hero. He, he really should be. Right. I mean, he should some certainly at least, at the very least, be bigger in the national debate. Why isn't he a bigger surrogate for whoever he's going to support? I assume it will be a Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, why is this guy <clears throat> lost in, in the scheme of things? Well, it's the same reason that blacks it's, vote 95% for the Democratic Party. He is considered to be uh, an Uncle Tom. He's a Republican. He's a black Republican. He's, a, he's, a, he's some sort of unicorn. I don't know what he is. Uh, that, that's, how, that's how they feel. So then and what it, do you do? What, what do you do as a Republican to break this narrative. You know, I got it. You tell, tell, the, tell truth. the truth. I got it. You tell the truth. But obviously, there has to be something bigger than messaging here because well, you're, it, you're telling me the numbers 90, 95 well, it's, percent vote it's, Democrat. it's an uphill fight. I mean, debates that that is the only way when you get um, someone from the left and someone from the right on a stage and we start debating topics and everything is put out on Front Street, there's no running, there's no hiding. All the lies, all the BS is going to be put out there for everyone to see. It's the way that I see it. I feel like that's common sense, but like a lot of you guys have said, common sense is no longer common, which is unfortunate. Messaging here because well, you're, you're it, telling me the numbers, 90, 95 well, percent it's, vote it's, Democrat. It's an uphill fight. I mean, to me, there is a uh, access of indoctrination. You have the media, you have academia, uh, and you have Hollywood, uh, all of which tell black people that they're victims. Um, most professors are to the left. Um, the media certainly is all to the left, and Hollywood's to the left. And so uh, you get up and, and you're indoctrinated all the time with uh, things like social justice, inequality, uh, the man's out to get you, uh, we need a higher minimum wage, you name the left-wing uh, policy and, 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 you, and you pick it up through osmosis. That's why when we first started the conversation, uh, I said, I hope to move you towards the center, and you said, I hope to move you towards, uh, towards, uh, towards the center. And I I said it's not going to happen because, uh, because I, I'm, I, there, there's nothing you can tell me I haven't heard, but I probably can say some things your audience hasn't heard. Uh, because LA Times, New York Times, CNN, uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, New York Times, uh, you name it, these are all to the left. Whatever left wing position, uh, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear uh, why, how, and where. But, but the other position, you won't hear unless you watch uh, Fox News or listen to talk radio, and a lot of people won't do it uh, if you make them, if you pay them. Right. So I hope it's clear in our 40 minutes or so together so far. When I say I'm on the left, I consider myself a classic liberal in that I stand for liberal principles. John but Stuart Mill type liberal. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's not a liberal. And, and I what know liberal principles. John but Stuart Mill type liberal. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's not a liberal. And, and I know in a lot that, of ways. That, that makes you a conservative. So a, so you're, you're, you're a Jack Kennedy kind of, uh, kind of Democrat. He cut taxes. It, right. He was a coal warrior. He, was, he liked hunting. He liked the Second Amendment. So doesn't this show you how stupid the words are? So what I did at the top of the no, show... No, it shows you how the Democratic Party has evolved to the left and abandoned principles. My mom was a, was a Democrat. My mom was a Republican. My dad was a Republican all his life. And my mom stopped voting for the Democratic Party. And she said, as many people have said, I didn't leave the Democratic Party. They left me. Uh, she didn't like welfare. Mm. She didn't like the idea of rewarding... Mm. I've been seeing that come up a lot recently private conversations, videos I've watched, things on social media. I didn't leave the left. They left me. Matter of fact, I think I just saw Elon Musk post a picture on Twitter about the same thing. I've seen it. I've, I've seen that a lot more recently and heard it a lot. I didn't leave the left. They left me. Do you guys, do you guys, uh, find that to be true? Let me know in the comment section.
some people uh, just because you had a kid uh, and then giving you more money when you had an additional kid. She didn't like any of all of that. Right. And she started voting for George W. Bush her last uh, two, two election cycles. So it's really ironic. That, well, it's not messaging. That... It's the fact that the country and the country in general has gone to the left uh, and the Democrats to, the, to a greater degree than Republicans have gone to the left. The country has changed, in part, in my opinion, because of immigration, including illegal immigration. Uh, people who are coming to the country illegally from third world countries like Mexico, they don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about limited government. They believe health care is a right. They're taught that in Mexico. They're taught that other places. And they come here in America and they pull that lever for the Democratic Party, which is why, in my opinion, the left wants borders to be porous because it changes because the country, right. changes the electorate. It changes the demographics mm -hmm. and, and all that. The Democratic uh, Party has not won the white vote since 1964. The more white people there are in the country, the worse Democrats do. The more left wing, the more people of color there are in the country, the best the left does. And so what incentive is there for them to, to police the borders? What incentive is there for, for them to shut down sanctuary cities, uh, to, to stop catch and release? There isn't. In my opinion, there's been a very subtle and very uh, diabolical changing of the mentality of this country by left-wing people so that a state like California could never vote for Ronald Reagan uh, as they did in the past, could never vote for Richard Nixon as they did in the past. Uh, you have New York and California just write them off. And, and there's 10 or 12 states now that we fight over. Everything else is now written off. It's ridiculous. So interesting conversation. Uh, like I said before, I've checked out a shorter clip of that previously but uh, hadn't checked out the full discussion. And, you know, one of the things that I, I enjoyed about that is that these guys obviously are on opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of, you know, the polit in terms of the political spectrum. Um, but they were able to have a calm discussion. And that is what we should all be able to do. Just have a discussion with one another. We aren't always going to agree on everything. That is, that is totally fine. Not everybody on the right agrees with everybody else on the right not everybody on the left agrees with everybody else on the left and that is totally fine that is a part of life but as always y'all let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below like share comment and of course hit the subscribe button before you go peace and love i'm out